In this video, we're gonna do a quick, just down and dirty, how to correct fuel trims um, and how to add or subtract fuel in HP tuners. A lot of you guys have asked me to do a quick video on this and explain it, uh, some of the differences between the different generations, Gen 3, 4, and 5. Um, and I've got some longer videos on this that have some wide open throttle fueling and things like that. Um, but in this video, I'm just gonna kind of show you down and dirty really quick how you would go about doing that. Um, so we're going to um, open up a, let's go ahead and open up a data log. And I'm gonna open up a, let's go find maybe an old data log that's got some, uh, yeah, so, whoops. I don't want to do anything with that. All right, so we're going to start with a Gen 3 file, and this is um, going to be one that's out of my Yukon. So I'm going to open up a data log, and then I'm also going to, if I can find a data log that's worth a flip. Okay, cool. So uh, what I'm going to do now is pull up a file. So when it comes to doing um, fuel corrections, okay, pulling fuel, adding fuel, where does it come from? All right, so the main spot, um, and this goes for all of the generations, uh, we're gonna go under engine, and we're gonna go to airflow general. So this MAF versus airflow frequency table, this is going to be primarily where we um, spend the majority of our time, um, you know, um, most of these vehicles run in a blended fashion between the mass airflow table, which is this table, as well as the VE table. Um, if it's a Gen 4 or Gen 5, um, it's going to have a virtual volumetric efficiency table. Let me pull one of those up for you so that you can see. This will be a Gen 4, it's a 2010 Silverado file. You'll notice that when you go to engine and you go to airflow and you go to frequency, okay, Looks kind of similar. These are the Hertz, and this is, these are pounds per hour of airflow. Okay, uh, and you can change that up here. Pounds per hour is pretty normal. Some people operate in grams per second. I like grams per second for some things, but I primarily just use pounds per hour here. And then if you go to the Edit tab, it'll show you the VVE table, and we'll we'll get into that a little bit later. But this is mainly just kind of a down and dirty way to correct your fuel trims. So what you're going to be doing um, in your tune file. Okay, is you're gonna be taking a data log. Notice this is the short-term fuel trims, STFT, math table. Okay, so what you wanna do is take the um, column value here, right-click uh, the column value out of your tune file. If I can get it to go back. Okay, and you would take this, right-click, column axes, copy labels, and you would paste this to in the graph layout, that way it matches, okay? And you have to, here we're logging the short-term fuel trim. You could do the short-term, uh, long-term math if you wanted to. Uh, most of us turn off long-term fuel trim, so we're not gonna have that in there, okay? And then obviously you want to have your um, PIDs, okay? The short-term fuel trim, bank one, bank two. And you're gonna go out and drive the vehicle. Um, and you'll notice here the fuel system status number one, Closed loop, this is the data we're going after. We're not talking about a wide band sensor right now. Um, so we're going to go out and just drive the vehicle. And notice that over this log file, this one obviously has been pretty well dialed in. If you do a camshaft or a motor swap or something like that, these numbers are gonna be bigger. You're gonna see you know, positive numbers, which are gonna be mean that it's lean, it's adding fuel. And then it's, uh, there's gonna be some that are gonna be rich, okay? Meaning it's pulling fuel. And what a lot of folks will do is you can go in here and you can color code these. We'll go uh, plus 25, meaning 25% lean is gonna be red. And then we can go minus 25, which is gonna be rich, is gonna be green. Anything within 10% is going to be you know, pretty acceptable. Um, if you're 10% off in one direction, especially if you're rich, the vehicle's typically gonna idle um, and run very sluggish and very strange. But essentially what we would do here um, these zeros up here, you can go in the log. Um, you can see here where um, it will transition. If you stab the throttle, it'll transition into open loop, which is power enrichment. Obviously, that data is no good. And so what you would likely do is take all of this data from the highest point. I'm noticing where these zeros are. 7,500 hertz is going to be where open loop is probably going to enable. 
So what we could do is just copy this and we would go back in here and um, on a big hit, you might hit pay special multiply. Um, and if you're going for smaller, more minute changes, you might do uh, the pay special by half. And then you would just wanna look and see you know, how smooth it is. Um, and you would go in and maybe blend some of these in especially if you saw something that looked like this, okay, you're gonna feel this right here, um, or if you have something like that, you're going to feel that. Um, so you wanna make sure that you have that, that smooth that, and if you hover over this area, it'll show you up here where that outlier is, and you can go in and smooth that out like so. So we'll just undo that. Um, so, and this goes for Gen 3s, Gen 4s, Gen 5s, okay? Obviously, when you do this, you have to have the vehicle forced into mass airflow only, okay? So, in all of them, it's gonna be in this area. So this is a Gen 4, you would set this to 400 um, and then 300. So, basically, everything 400 RPM and below is gonna operate on that VE table, or the cranking VE. Regardless of what most people say, um, even some of the more wild combinations, even in the gen, especially the Gen 4s and 5s, mass airflow sensor mode only is going to be just fine. It, you're, you, you, it's just going to be perfectly fine. Um, you can go out and test this with your vehicle. Um, it wasn't until 2015 or 16, I think, that even you could edit the VVE tables. So everything was tuned on mass airflow sensor only. Um, and especially the Gen 4s and 5s, the uh, frequency t uh, frequencies are much higher. Um, so you get a lot more range. This one goes up, these go up to 15,000 versus like a Gen 3 only goes up to 12,000, okay? And it has a hard cap um, in, you know, as far as how much airflow it's allowed to flow. It's like 512 or 513 or something like that. So that's where with the Gen 3s, you'll find people having to go to using just the speed density table you know, that operates solely off the map sensor um, is because um, there's a hard cap and you can only flow so much. And if you do a supercharger or a turbocharger, the Gen 3s just can't handle that versus a Gen 5. I'll pull up a Gen 5 here. Let's close that. No, I don't want to make any changes. Okay, versus a Gen 5, if we go down here to like a 2015 Yukon or it could be a, a VET or a Camaro or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, it'd be the same thing here. You would still want to force this into math only mode doing something like this. And this vehicle would run just fine. There's your mass airflow curve right there. This is a factory one. I'm not sure why it's like this, but there again, um, you would dial all this in um, doing your short term fuel trim tuning and then your wide open throttle tuning with a wideband sensor. Um, but especially on these, I mean, really all of them, Gen 3s, 4s, and 5s, and Gen 3s, if they're not uh, forced induction, you're not going to have any problem running these in mass airflow sensor only mode. There is a way where you can tune them in the blended mode. That's for a different video. Um, but that is essentially how you would do it. Um, you would make sure that your um, column axis here matches whatever your tune file is. And a lot of these trucks from this or vehicles from the same, you know, eras, it's going to be the same, but you'd always want to double check and come down here, this one obviously starts at zero and you would right click, copy labels. Um, you can also go in and you can, um, and I've got videos on this where I've tested this, you can go in and you can um, keep power enrichment from coming in. So like on this one, they're set really high. You could leave this here, you know, that way you're not getting power enrichment numbers, uh, data getting in there. You could also come in here and disable uh, decel fuel cutoff if you're running catalytic converters, you can disable cat over temp, which a lot of you guys are, are disabling that anyway because you're running an off-road setup. Um, but generally speaking, you're not gonna go wrong just by simply disabling long-term fuel trims, setting this to something like this, the min map versus barrow, set this to something unrealistic, it's never gonna get there, okay? Save that, and then you won't have to worry about long-term fuel trims. Um, but this is just a really kind of down and dirty way um, to do it. If you have a stock vehicle or you have just minor bolt-ons like heads and an intake and a throttle body, this stuff's not gonna change too much. What is going to change though is going to be when you change power enrichment and stuff like that, where it transitions into wide open throttle fueling. Um, you know, especially if you have stock injectors and things like that, you know, this is all 
it's not gonna take too much adjustment to get this dialed in. And again, on the mass airflow sensor, it's going to be just fine. Um, so again, a lot of you guys have been asking me to do just kind of a quick video on fuel trims and how to pull fuel, how to add fuel. Um, remember, positive numbers are gonna be lean, okay? So when you go in uh, and you paste this data in, or you can see here in this 4125 range, we've got positive twos, fours, and ones. We could go back to our table over here in airflow. And if you wanted to manually put this in, you could do something like this. And again, if it's a positive number, it's lean. So we have to add fuel, okay? So if we wanted to add 4%, we would go up here and go 1.04, multiply, and we just added. It shows you what you changed, and it didn't even make a little dent there. I wouldn't even blend these in. Um, uh, so that's how you would add fuel. Those of you that are talking about you know, being rich and you have negative 12s, negative 15s, wherever that area is, you know, say that it was just an isolated area, something like this in that 3,800 range. I know the scale is not exactly the same, but for right now it's fine. You know, if you're 10% rich and you need to take fuel out of it, you would go the opposite way, 0 0.90, multiply it would take it out. You can see it made a little bit of a hump right here. So we would need to go in here and just blend these together, okay? Um, so this is how you do the mass airflow table. Again, you have to make sure that you have the vehicle in mass airflow sensor mode only. So airflow, dynamic, and this high RPM disable. For Gen 4s and 5s, the disable and the re-enable are set 100 RPM apart. For a Gen 3, there's just the disable. And you would set that load to like 400 or 300 or something like that. Again, most of these vehicles, I mean all of these vehicles basically, are gonna run great just on the mass airflow sensor. So do not be afraid of that. It's simple, it's much easier to dial in than the VE table. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any more questions, we've got tons of videos coming out, um, of new content. So if you guys comment down below, let me know what you want to see. And if you've got questions about tune files, I'll be sure to post it up and review files, do whatever you'd like for me to do. Um, reach out if you need my email address or anything. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one.